Okay. All right, hello everyone. I am Dr. R.J. Burr of Reach Rehab and uh, Chiropractic Performance Center. And uh, next video of our series on injury prevention with professionals in the area, I have today Mr. Daniel Allison from Omnivo Performance Academy or Omnivo Wellness. Um, and Dan is a, um, he's going to talk down on himself. He's going to be very humble about this. In my opinion, Dan is one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the business, um, and especially in the area. I've known him for a while, uh, does great work. Um, specifically, Dan works a lot with, um, in, um, in hockey, hockey athletes, hockey goalies, but also works with recreational athletes, some general, general population. Uh, but typically, you know, we can work with all sorts of athletes, but typically niches in that hockey goalie. Am I correct on that, Dan? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the, thank you for the kind words. Yeah, no problem. All right. So um, my first question for you is, you know, it's been a little while um, and we've been in quarantine. Luckily, we're getting out of it here, hopefully pretty soon. Hopefully. So what, what's been keeping you busy? What have you been doing during quarantine? Well, you know, I'm trying to keep myself active, you know, going outside, going for dog walks, going for sprint workouts, um, you know, getting my at-home workouts in and all that. Um, but with all the sports seasons coming to an abrupt end, we've got a lot of athletes who are, you know, who have been just sitting around and have been wanting to do workouts at home and, you know, are dying to get in the gym. So I've been spending this time really just getting programs ready for all these guys and girls that are either in high school, college, or adults trying to play pro or recreationally, just kind of getting their programs really organized and getting in touch with them on Zoom or on calls and figuring out what kind of things they're dealing with, whether it be injuries or just their, their performance, performance goals in general. And, uh, you know, it's getting the plans in place for when we get to go ahead. Awesome, man. It's great stuff. Um, how has it been maintaining and working with those people during this time? I'm, I have to imagine there's been a little bit of uh, complexity or complication. Yeah. So, um, you know, the great part about having the big community online and having a younger population of athletes that we work with, everyone's on Instagram, everyone's doing zoom and stuff like that or email. So it is pretty instantaneous of people that are checking in saying, Hey, you know, I need a program right away. I'm only going to have my basement or my garage, or I'm going to be able to go to my whatever backyard and do something. Um, and then as far as stuff for the summer, it's really just been gathering as much information as we can about, again, like I said earlier, everyone's goals, injuries they're dealing with. So when we can go full go at the gym again, or in whatever new normal style, um, you know, the athletes have programs ready for them that we're able to coach really well that address the things that they need. Okay. So you can basically do some, obviously you'd want to be one-on-one, -on -one, not one-on-one, -on -one, but in person with people to help coach, but you're still able to provide adequate coaching virtually. Yeah. You know, we're still, you know, whatever people are comfortable with phone call, zoom call, um, we're getting on the phone and we're getting as much of the information we can that you don't necessarily need to be in person for. So some of the actual like joint range of motion, you know, hands-on type tests we're, we're holding off on until, you know, it's safe for people to come in and all that. Um, but as far as a lot of the, the other stuff, goal stuff and some different performance testing, you know, that's a simple, you know, email and a link away as far as, hey, do these things. We're going to get on a Zoom and evaluate them. We're going to get on a call and talk about them and then, you know, get started on a program. Wonderful, man. Okay. So you mentioned injury in there and injuries are a part of sports. Obviously this uh, series that we're doing is all about yeah. injury prevention management, so on and so forth. Cause we all deal with it. Right. So um, how do you approach that athlete or athletes that sort of come with a lot of injury baggage, whether it's mean they've been injured a lot, maybe they have what I like to call musculoskeletal PTSD, meaning that, you know, they've had an injury and they're scared about re-injuring. Um, thus kind of changing their mental mindset uh, a little bit of you know look, some trauma can kind of linger right yeah uh, what's what is your guys's approach with dealing with that when someone is say cleared to play from their physician or chiropractor PT or whatever you know that's a great question and um, if you don't mind if we unpack it a little bit like right. I think the the main the one thing that's going to be in common with everyone that we encounter that has you know current injury or is you know return to play or you know, just had a bad experience years ago with an injury and it's always on their mind or whatever, is just 
getting to know what, you know, where they're at with that, you know, is it, is it something that really plagues them still physically, mentally, you know, every time they do sprints, do they think about the hamstring strain they had three years ago? Um, you know, every time they do a uh, trap bar deadlift, they think their back's going to hurt because they hurt their back doing it with, you know, not great form, too heavy, you know, a few years prior, you know, so just kind of gauging where they're at with that, or are they pretty banged up and they're, you know, pretty tough to admit that they actually feel like crap. And, you know, you know, you're, you need to pull the reins back on them a little bit. Um, you know, and then there's other times where, um, you know, the athlete just needs a more aggressive stimulus to, uh, to get back and they're not really understanding that or able to get over that, that mental hump yet of, Hey, it's safe for me to, to stress this joint or whatever. And, really push it to the limit to be able to recover from it. That's something that we work a little bit harder, harder to, you know, explain to athletes is, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you know, take that joint, let's say if it was a, a joint type injury and expose it to a much greater stimulus than what hurt it. You know, that, that's kind of a, a general overview philosophy of that, you know, return to play or what have you. And then as far as the actual exercises go, you know, that's going to come more down to, um, you know, what have they done before? What do they need to be able to do, you know, at when, when they're back playing? And, you know, how much of it has they done up to this point? What's the safest way for us to start implementing that? And then, you know, be as aggressive as we can, um, pushing things in the right manner without pushing too hard. I see. Okay. You know, and, then and then really just with the organization of the program, I think, because – you know, everything affects the whole, the whole program or the whole athlete's schedule, you know, affects their recovery. So, you know, where we'll place stuff in their program, maybe coinciding with some visits to see you um, will also have an impact on how we spread out, say, running and jumping and lifting for an athlete who's like a return to play versus, you know, someone who's just coming in to train. Got it. Okay. So it sounds like there's, there's kind of two main groups of athletes and their approach when they have say injury baggage, it's kind of like the one that is kind of scared to get back in there and they need a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of handholding to sit it, so to say. And then the other one where it's like, they're just balls to the wall, they push and they want to get back, but maybe they overdo it and push it too hard. Um, am I understand that correctly? Yeah. I'd say, you know, in the, the second category, yeah, the second version is, isn't always like they're pushing it too hard in a way of, of concern. Okay. Um, but they're, they're going to – they probably won't make as big a, as much noise about something not feeling right than the other group. Oh, so they're, so they're almost – they hold it and they, they have a problem, but they're not voicing it, which could lead into a bigger issue when they – they would just yeah. have said something earlier and maybe could have been avoided. Yeah, they're usually like a younger sibling. Like if they come from a family, they're usually like – you know, too tough to tell mom and dad that like it hurts and ends up being a good quality as far as like being a leader on a team. But yeah. as far as like coming back from injury, you know, they may, may not tell you that the, you know, the workout that you did the day before left them kind of feeling like crap. They might just like tough yeah. it out. And, yeah. You know, it's okay. You know, it, it yeah. maybe it is, but they're not going to communicate it maybe as easily. For sure. Now with your experience working with hockey athletes and, you know, I mean, anywhere from, my gosh, right, like high school all the way to professional, essentially. Uh, what do you find that – and obviously also at Omnivo, you guys have recreational athletes and gen pop as well. What do you find that the gen pop and recreational athletes might do mistakenly trying to mimic the athletes that actually may be causing more harm than good? Um, yeah, that's a good one. And, I, and actually this probably goes for both of them. Um, you know, if we want to define athletic, that could be a lot of different things. Right. Yeah. But let's, I, we'll, we'll say like your, you know, your, your general population client or whatever you want to call it, you know, maybe them thinking they need to do all these high velocity rotational and, you know, diagonal movement, side to side movement, stuff like that. Um, when they can't really perform just in a doorway, straight up and down, straightforward, simple, two leg exercise uh, stuff with competent form yet, just meaning they might not be doing the basic stuff with the best positioning and form off the bat. And, 
now adding something more complex and more, you know, more coordination involved and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's pro they're probably not going to re recover well from that or respond well to that, you know, and especially if they don't have an athletic background. Um, now on the other end, a lot of times athletes, you know, they can seemingly move pretty well rotationally side to side, all that. But again, their competency of like, like, uh, you know, straight up and down movements, the basic movements, um, cleaning those things up a lot of times with them result in their bodies feeling better and them being able to do their rotational side to side type stuff, you know, a little bit easier, a little better. So the, the one thing in common would be just kind of getting, getting people overall to be able to, you know, have better movement capabilities and, um, I don't want to say quality because I don't, I don't know if movement quality is a thing, but you know, movement options. And then, you know, are they capable of controlling those options? You know? So I think, you know, that would be the big common thing with both of them, but I think they could learn more from each other than, you know, than we could draw, you know, negatives back and forth. You know, I think they both, I think Jen pop needs a healthy dose of, you know, speed agility, quickness stuff, it's just not going to look like a track workout. You know, it's going to look like, um, you know, like stepping on a box and tossing a med ball type thing. I think every, everyone needs these different trainable qualities. Um, the how and the why might just be a little bit different based upon, you know, what they're getting ready for, whether it's a pro sport or um, being able to be the best dad on the block at doing dad stuff. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. So it, it seems like for both, regardless of your what scale of athlete you are, because we're all essentially athletes, right? Just different levels of it. Exactly. That we just need to be good at the principles, good at the basics. Uh, make sure that we're we have a lot of movement variability and capacity, but we're not exceeding that and stepping beyond our means when we're not ready for it. Um, and when we do that, I mean. I, mean, I think we can agree with me that if we, do, we jump to that stuff too soon, we focus on those things, we're going to have more detriment than we have gains. Um, and really people just need to take a step back and focus on doing the basic stuff well, instead of the low hanging fruit, which is the sexy Insta famous stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say so for the most part, you know, there's, there's definitely a time and place for nuance and yeah. um, you know, like our programs will show that as well, but like, um, most people aren't ready for it yet. Most people are doing, you know, the basic stuff, not as well as they could yet. Yeah. You know, not saying effort wise or anything like that, but just as far as like awareness and education on, um, you know, how to move different parts of your body, I suppose, through different okay. means, you know. Right. So someone shouldn't do a one-legged BOSU ball squat if they're not very good at doing a bilateral goblet squat. <laughs> No, I mean, probably not unless that's like their only, like their only goal in training in life, you know? <laughs> right. I gotcha. All right. And then, uh, so we already, you've already established that you work with a lot of hockey athletes, athletes in, in, in particular, right? I mean, for you at Omnivo, you're mostly working with the athletes. You're not working as much as the gen pop. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Gotcha. Well, now there's a lot of coaches out there. There's other people that brand themselves as strength and conditioning coaches, probably for hockey as well. Uh, what would you say, um, you know, why would someone maybe want to work with you opposed to someone else? Like, what are your services geared toward? What makes you different? Well, um, instead of saying, like, what we are and what other people aren't, I'll just explain our, our program. So, I mean, what we do is we bring an athlete in for an eval, you know, whatever you want to call it, an assessment, where, you know, we want to get to know the athlete as much as possible, athlete's family, um, let them get to know us a little bit. Uh, talk about their goals, go over what they've got going on physically, you know, um, from table testing to some basic, uh, you know, human capability strength testing. You know, can you stand on one leg for two minutes? Can you hang from a bar? Can you do some different things like that? Um, some endurance testing, power testing with jumping and whatnot, you know, and then from their detail or detail a program for them where, you know, they're going to be able to come in either two or five days a week, not Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're going to have their own own program, their own workout where they go through speed work for their position, their sport, 
you know, agility work, power work, strength work, and then endurance work for their sport as well. On Tuesday, Thursday, they'll come in for individualized mobility work for, you know, each joint of the body that they, you know, they need help with. And then, you know, the program is going to be organized to where there's going to be four, four week blocks. So every four weeks, the program is going to change up and progress. Um, each athlete's going to have their own full, their own program. They're going to get coached up, um, you know, for an hour session. And, you know, we're going to be in touch with you all the time, whether it's Instagram, you know, texting, and, you know, anywhere online. And, you know, we help with nutrition. We help with, you know, stuff to do at home. We're very flexible with skating schedules. You know, a lot of the goalies are going out for, for skill lessons on the ice. And, you know, we've got, we've got some, some different time slots that allow goalies to be a little bit flexible by coming in between like nine and noon. We're coming in, you know, a little bit afternoon, one, two, uh, 12, one, 2 PM. And, um, you know, so we provide opportunities for, for athletes to get in and get very well-rounded programs like they might have at the junior ranks, or college ranks, pro ranks. Um, and then, you know, those sessions are staffed with qualified coaches to, you know, to lead them in a pretty high energy atmosphere. You know, we have, we have fun. We turn the music up, but we take, you know, we take the effort and the technique and, you know, the level of care very seriously. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that, that's what you're going to get. You're going to train with, you know, five, six other people at the same time, you know, keeping social distance and all that. And, you know, having a couple coaches in there at all times, you know, holding you accountable, teaching technique and, um, you know, just getting after it. So, yeah, I love it. Now, what are a few things now I know already know this. So you don't throw people on Smith machines and peck decks and do curls for the girls or guys or whatever you're, you're well, we might on, right? some- Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. That's not all you're doing. That's just throwing people in, you know, a bunch of machines, right? What are some things that like some valuable skills athletes will learn as a result of working with Omnivo that they may would not pick up from just, you know, doing a general strength conditioning program or what they may not, not already know from just being involved in sports? Yeah, I'm just going to start in order that comes off the top of my head. So I would say they're going to know how to control their own body position for all the different lifting exercises that they're going to be exposed to you know, in various other programs that they may go to in the future, you know, or maybe they're doing workouts at the rink now or at home, they're going to get educated on how to do their, you know, their squatting or deadlifting on all the different variations safely, where oftentimes we get a lot of athletes that come to us like, Hey, have you done, you know, lifting before? Like, yeah, you know, my back always hurts when I deadlift or do trap bar coach tells me to look right up at the ceiling and, you know, I should feel my legs. And, um, you know, so teaching them, you know, basic um you know they they get termed as basic movement squat deadlift trap bar all that but like there's so much complexity of the positioning in within that that you know you can't expect really any kid to know how to do that really well so over the course of time you know teaching them how to be able to be confident enough to get under a front squat or a back squat or a trap bar and know that they're doing it with good positioning for them you know not some universal um, everyone's got the same, has to have the same cues on squat or deadlift or this or that. Um, and, and that's a small part of what I think is important. Um, they're going to learn breath work and within that, that'll be utilized to help them control positions, their body, you know, not from a meditative standpoint, you know, that's not maybe another time of place, but from a standpoint of them being able to actually control pressure in their back or pressure in their abs, um, being able to move you know, their hips around and their, their rib cage and thorax around. We're going to teach them some valuable strategies for that to where, again, they're at a rink all year where we're not at. They know how to do this on their own without us, without us holding their hand. You know, they know if their back's tight, their hips are stiff. They know that they have some things that they can do. And then, um, you know, the, the environment, and the, the, you know, energy we try to promote in there is, you know, let's be detailed, but, you know, also like get after it 110%, you know, give it everything you have. So if you're an athlete who hasn't really seen the value of strength conditioning before is maybe you've been in an environment that's not really pushing you and you're not training with people that are pushing you the right way, you know, you're definitely going to be tested as far as, 
how hard you can push yourself. You're going to be challenged with different things and not from a standpoint of getting whistleblown at you and getting yelled at, but from a standpoint of just training progression and, you know, a lot of high energy individuals that have, have big goals to do big things in their life. And, you know, you're going to be around a lot of people that are, are hungry to succeed. Awesome. Hey, we're running out of, a little, out of time here. I got a couple more questions for you. So Let's real see. quick for our audience, what is like one tip you'd leave them with regarding injury prevention? Um, make sure, so make sure you're stimulating what you, you could get hurt from in, you know, in competition, you know what I mean? So if you're going to be sprinting a lot and you haven't done any sprinting or anything that looks like sprinting, then you get hurt from sprinting as soon as you do it. Can't be surprised. So, you know, leading up to playing your sport, you know, do stuff that's going to, you know, mock the amount of impact that's going to go through your body. It's going to mock the movements. Um, and that could be done in a lot of different ways. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. So the, the biggest thing is that it, whatever you're training, you need to, for your sport, whatever it may be, you actually need to train that, get your body adapted and ready for yeah. it because you, you don't, you don't rise to the occasion. You fall to your highest level of preparation, right? Yeah, the best analogy I can think of off the top of my head is like, like you can't spend money. That's not in the bank already. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, unless you, you have credit cards and loans and stuff, but imagine you can only spend what cash is in your bank account, you know, and, and that, that's your training. That's your preparation. There's nothing in the bank account when it's time to use it. Well, you there's your injury or there's your fatigue, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So smart training, smart preparation, work on your weak links, train for your sport, whether it's going to be hockey or it's going to be, I don't know, doing a hit class, you know, or whatever, or riding the bike, whatever it may be. You need to be able to train your activities. Cool, yes. man. All right. So we had uh, Dan, Dan Allison, I'm Nevo performance strength conditioning coach, um, hockey trainer extraordinaire and uh, wonderful individual himself. Uh, we've known each other for quite a while and I appreciate you. One of the first per people I contacted about doing this. So I really appreci appreciate you hopping on and doing this and you know, sharing a little bit more about yourself and injury prevention, helping out our audience. Now, last but not least, how can someone contact you, whether they want to work with you or maybe they have some questions regarding if they're a good fit or maybe they want, need to start somewhere else. Just some, some way to contact you for some guidance. Yeah, so, I mean, Instagram is the quickest one right now at Coach Dan Allison or at Omnivo.performance. And then email anytime, dan at omnivoperformance.com. Love it, man. Cool. Any last words? No, just thank you so much, man. I think I very highly of you and appreciate you so much. And I really, uh, I'm really excited about doing this. So thank you very much. Awesome. I love it. Well, if these things continue, we should do it again sometime. Absolutely, RJ. We'll see you soon, buddy. Sounds good. Take care.